Good people, did you know that there are folks who don't apply for jobs? Don't even look for business opportunities. Opportunities just come to them. They are on the headhunters list. How do you get yourself on the headhunters list? Well, we'll be telling you that and a lot more only on the Headhunter Show. Hi, I'm Michael Aldridge. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Kafisi. And I'm going to be talking to you about three things. Number one, why all companies should really be considering flexible workspace as their solution for their work environment. Number two, I'm going to be talking about the impact that flexible workspace really has on your teams and why having really stimulating and sophisticated workspaces can increase the productivity of your business. And number three, I'm going to be talking to you about Kafisi and how we do things differently, making sure that all our members have a great day at work as they experience hospitality-led services and environments. Welcome to The Headhunter. We begin this episode with a conversation about what are the trends looking at like on the future of work. So um, there's been a lot of conversation about you know, working from home, uh, working in flexi spaces, and we're honored to have uh, none other than the CEO and co-founder of Kofisi, that's Michael Aldridge with us. Take a look at his profile. Ladies and gentlemen, here goes Michael. Thank you for being here with us. Yeah, well, thanks very much for coming to visit us. And um, it's, it's, it's really an interesting um, space, I must say. Um, and uh, we've gone around and what you're saying is that you're expanding and expanding, expanding. You put it at 40% uh, growth, that is as of last year. Yes, that's correct. What's this appetite we're seeing? Well, it's quite fantastic. Um, certainly, there was a huge uh, change in thinking prior to the global pandemic. But uh, now with uh, the, the knock-on effects of COVID, there's been this giant global work experiment about what is work balance? Where do you need to be? Do you need to be at home? Do you need to be in the office? And I think that's led now to more companies needing to engage with different formats about how they're going to work. Uh, and what that is now doing is, is, is adding even, uh, even more uh, momentum to a movement that was already there. Uh, the, the, the flexible workspace market has grown 13 times its size over the last 10 years in, in, across the world. Uh, there are many millions of people wh who, who are using flexible work, work environments. But what's now happening is uh, more companies are starting to, to adopt this idea. Um, the sector itself, co-working, can really range from an individual right up to a company. And they're, they're, although not a huge difference, they are nuanced in the way that the demands of a business who wants to come into a flex environment versus an individual, they, they vary. What we've, but what we're finding now is that more and more companies are realizing that they can uh, deliver their workspace through better more expert work environments by coming to work with experts. And that has led to this enormous amounts of demand. Um, and specifically here in, on, on this continent and in, in, in the city of Nairobi, we've seen tremendous interest and growth and demand, um, which we still believe there's so much more to do. Let's look at the COVID uh, effect on this, because I think the last uh, two years have been really critical in kind of, you know, going through this decision of you know whether to go this flexi way and what have you so what has covid contributed to to the growth of this so uh as we said i think there's been a huge experiment that n n as a, as a as an operator inside the industry this has been an amazing thing for us because companies have understood that they don't necessarily have to be proximate to each other to be able to deliver productive work our whole goal with Kafisi was to create productive work environments. We do that by offering um, a range of services, but notably we're giving a consistent, high quality, stimulating work environment. We're very different, as you can see when you're sitting in this room now, we're very much a hotel hospitality led model as well, making sure that you have everything you need to be able to get on with your main job. Um, but what then happened with COVID was that companies started to realize that Perhaps they don't need 
uh, principles like one desk per person. Rotational teams started to become of interest. But what they have all realised is no matter, you can't be extreme at the extremes if everyone works at home. Some businesses have done that very well. There are some amazing stories of certain technology businesses that have got 100% work from home. But if you actually think about it through the annuals of time, um, we're, you know, religion has taught us that you still need to come together once a week and, and reaffirm your faith. And so companies coming together to reaffirm their cultural faith, you know, what they stand for is really important. And that's where we come in, because what we can do is we can offer them everything they need when they come in for that day. We can flex, we can flex their size to, dependent on how many people they want to have at any one time. And if they decide to change to 100%, one desk per person, they can, they can do that with us as well. Because the, the, the worry, especially for you know, a CEO or senior leader, will be that I might not have a clear line of sight into how my team is looking. For instance, if I just have them um, you know, strewn all over or not under one organization or in our headquarters, for instance. Correct. I mean, every entrepreneur who's listening to our conversation will know that business is not a straight line. It's a, it's a roller coaster, right? And um, even when it goes well, you don't, that, that sometimes can be the worst scenario when it comes to resource planning. Because I know when I set my first business up, I won a big contract and then I didn't have enough space, which meant I had to move to other offices, but I had a long lease on a smaller space and that was then disconnected. So it didn't allow me to be dynamic. And part of my drive to build this business in Africa was because I'd seen how this kind of service can improve business productivity in the European environment. And I believe that this was a service that was required here. And so, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting journey for the CEO. And I, I, we were talking earlier, and I, I, you know, there's, there's always going to be a board discussion about your, your investment in your workspace. Yeah, actually, it's coming to that in the sense of like, so you have a conversation right now, and of course, people are going back to work. It's a new year, there's a lot of energy, and the conversation comes on the table or in a board meeting, for instance, that, hey, uh, between the CEO, the CFO, for instance, and maybe the head of people, yeah. that should we go the flex way, should we scale down on our investments? Yeah. So take us through that process. How will they think about it? You know, whether or not to actually invest in an entire building as yes. a headquarters yes. versus yes. going the flexi way. Anyone who is coming out of their lease cycle now, during the next election cycle, if you will, sort of four to five years, every single one of them is going to consider whether making a long-term investment into their um, space through a long lease in a conventional space makes any sense at all. I think they're all terrified of... Because what, what, one thing you must remember is that next to people, your office cost is your second biggest line item on your, on your profit and loss. Okay? And that's a really important point. Um, when you then look at it and you consider all of the costs, and this is where sometimes the education is required, uh, when you actually look at all costs, which bridges both the capital expenditure budget and the operating expenditure budget, you add those together and you consider that total cost plus the inefficiencies of time, the inefficiencies of space, the inefficiencies of buying, because they're not experts in this. We do this on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, and as a, you know if, you, if you have a wobbly tooth, you... You go to a dentist, you don't attempt to try and pull that out yourself. I mean, you could, but it would be awkward. Yeah, well, and there we go. And there lies the analogy, because um, we, we know how to deliver space. We, my team lives for space, loves space, and we've learned so much over the 10 years we've been, we've been operating in these markets to ensure that um, the proposition and the space, right, and the service is at the highest level possible. So the cost is cheaper, um, and you're quite right. Those are the three discussions. It's the, the CEO, the CFO, and, and the head of people. And I think the trump card now has really become, the cost savings are compelling, which is education, but the real trump card has been that the investment by companies in their people and their wellness, which is a, which is a, a very, very important theme now for, for companies in its most basic sense, but also because the differential between businesses can sometimes be quite small. Um, if you look at you know, any industry where there are duopolies or there are a small team in the higher league, how do you dif differentiate yourself from your competitors? 
And one of those has to be that you give amazing work experience, work workspace. Well, that has been our episode with Michael Aldridge, our CEO and co-founder of uh, Coffee Africa. Uh, honored to have been here. My name is Lab and Cliff. Uh, be sure, of course, to catch this on our social media platforms across the standard media group. As the headhunter show, of course, what we hope to achieve is really um, talk to, of course, uh, the business leaders, really get their insights into how uh, the trends are looking, especially in the organizations. And uh, did you know that people never apply for jobs, actually? They are hunted. So how do you become part of that hunted list? And uh, I'll reach out to Michael as well and just to get his beat about uh, his management a bit because, of course, with our target audience as well and the people who are watching us, they're really keen to see how do they improve themselves and how do they improve their business. Let's look at uh, the international investor. And right now, of course, there was a wait and see, especially, um, you know, with COVID and stuff, there wasn't any movement around. But Kenya is really big on attracting international investors. Um, so here's... But investors sitting in London, for instance, maybe the US, and they now would like now to come into Africa through Nairobi, for instance. How would you take them through that journey to, you know, uh, choosing whether or not to go the flexi way or the uh, an opportunity to invest? Um, what, what would you advise them in terms of their investment in their in their space? Space, yeah. 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 So, well, um, that's an interesting point as well because most of what we do is we are. Um, ensuring that there's a global standard to the way that we operate. We're trying to make what we do very recognizable and available to African, African either companies, deployed teams or multinationals, okay? We very much focus at that company end. Um, if you are an international business and you are based in New York or you're based in London or you're based in Berlin, you are very aware of the concept of flexible workspace. And you know, nearly 10 to 11 percent of commercial space in um, these developed uh, cities are moving towards flexible workspace, which means like one in every 10 floors in a building, right, is actually flexible space, which is incredibly compelling um, data, especially when you actually look here at it. If that if they took that 10 percent here, we're under half a percent. So there's a 20 times growth market in flexible working just to catch up. And we know that in the African environment, um, it's brilliant how the, all of the countries and cities leapfrog to the correct answer. So we expect to see tremendous growth in flexible workspace across the whole sector. And so most of those businesses recognize that product, they understand the benefits of it, and they like the flexibility. So they will naturally, if you're engaging or entering into a, into a market, those kind of companies are coming straight to us because we give them the platform to, to start. Another question that comes to mind, thanks to Michael for these insights, is so what happens to this, uh, you know, realtors, investors into, you know, the skyscrapers um, who are quite keen or they've seen that appetite on office spaces and now they're seeing the flexi spaces yes. from a, from a Contra construction contractors perspective yeah well, well what's going to happen to the business you yeah, know it's good but it, yeah. you know there's a there's a there's a little bit of a tension relationship yeah. that's that's brewed globally between the, the real estate owners the yeah. real estate brokers and the flexible service providers um it shouldn't be that way though because yeah. at the end of the day two things one is we're a very good tenant for a for a biz for a building yeah. because i tra the thing i trade is the space the thing they want to sell is the space. If I was a startup company selling uh, buckets and I lose my big contract, I could go out of business and then the, then the landlord has got a defaulting tenant. Whereas if I lose a client in my main trade, which is space, I find another client to come in, okay? So we're much more, we're holding hands a lot more, okay? And that's a very important thing. The second thing is um, there's a, there's a well-documented principle of tenant tow, which is where by having a flexible provider inside your building with a brand, it can cement the 
look and feel of your building, the cult, the, you know, how you want to, your buildings to be perceived. So any of the new buildings, the category buildings that are coming up out of the ground in any of the cities like Nairobi we're in, um, by having Kafisi inside that, it makes a statement to the market that this is the premium provider. Look at the kind of clients that, this, that these guys have. More people are coming through the building and that then leads to larger companies wanting to take the balance of that space. So there's an ecosystem. But the, what the building landlords need to understand, and I think they're getting there, is it, the, the world of I put a building up and I just take the rent and, and I take some service charge, that is changing because every customer is, to, is needing more. And so the, 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 the winners will be those that understand that ecosystem. And we're seeing a lot more of that happening now. Thanks, Michael. Um, now let's look at your crystal ball if you're looking now into the future. So you have this uh, you know, flexible workspace is out. Um, there's a lot of investment in many more. Uh, you see great appetite in that. Um, what is the other opportunity or the business opportunity that you're seeing that is brewing, especially after investment in this, in this, in this uh, field? L last year, we're, we're very grateful for the fact that we had our best year ever. And 2021, we, we, we grew our space by 40, 40 45%. Um, we are now managing 200,000 square feet of space. We, we'd like to be a million square feet of space. Um, that's a 65 story building to sort of help people ha understand that. Yeah. But interestingly, that's still only, that's half the size of the Empire State Building. So, you know, that's one building. And, and actually when you think about how much that could be done in our core product, there's nothing to say we couldn't be 5 million square feet of space. Um, but, our, but, but in terms of your question, our principles have always been around creating a great day at work by combining um, space technology and service. We've made huge investments into our technolo integrated technology inside the spaces. We're app controlled across most of what we do. We provide 360 degree camera and sound technology in all our meeting rooms, um, as well as uh, in engaging with uh, early stages into data, uh, data analysis about how spaces are being used to help companies make informed decisions. Uh, helping them being able to book spaces so that the rotational systems can work well. Uh, our service area uh, is a, is another big is an, it will be another big growth uh, uh, space for us. Um, we're tremendously uh, excited by uh, a couple of projects that we're working on this year. We're increasing our food and beverage proposition, um, which is a step towards uh, our, our wellness investment, which is really what will be our big move for this year, where we'll be putting more services and spaces in, into our buildings to help with the, the wellness triangle of sleep, diet, and exercise. Yeah, yeah all together. Yeah, all together. So we'll be installing uh, gyms inside our, in, in our spaces for fitness, uh, as well as helping with the mind, body, and soul as well through um, various types of classes that you Would you like to do that on your own or you welcome for investment or partnerships? We're looking, yeah. yes, we'd, yeah, we're very much welcome for, for partnerships. Okay. Uh, we've, we've always seen that as, a, as an excellent way to grow. When we consider the continent, we look at the diamond, the classic sort of diamond feel of North, East, South, West. Yeah. Um, we're very strong here on the East Coast, which is where our home and origins are. Um, we are looking at going into neighbouring countries and cities. Uh, we've looked at uh, Rwanda, we're looking at uh, uh, Uganda, um, we have ambition for Ethiopia uh, over time, um, and then you know other, other, other areas in the east, but we're very strong here, um, we're the largest provider in Nairobi, and, um, but then we're also launched in the west, unfortunately just before COVID started, so that's kind of that put some breaks on our expansion, but we like Ghana as a, as a Accra as an opportunity for us. Um, and that's something that we will really pursue um, heavily this year. Uh, and then the North, uh, which is a completely uh, different environment c contextually. Um, uh, we're very interested in uh, Casablanca. We're very interested in Cairo. Uh, and, and then, of course, the South. The, but South Africa is the southern, the southern area is a bit more um, populated with supply. Um, it's not to say our product line wouldn't, wouldn't work there. We still have, we have operations in Johannesburg and we are looking to expand. It's probably not our top priority, yeah. um, but we, you know, we're very much a client-led business. Yeah. And so we have multinationals who are in 
in centres with us across the whole of the continent. You get a feel from, you know, uh, especially um, looking at the business community, because there's just a whole lot of, um, I can't say confusion, for instance, but I said a lot of cons consultation. So you're sitting there as a consultant to some of these uh, businesses, you know, for instance, even a in small scale business, mm. forget about the large ones, as I say, and Kenya is very vibrant in that whole uh, SME space. What would be your advice for them, you know, in terms of like, you know, how do you now handle this key cost that you actually say that it's second to the people cost, which is your, you know, um, cost of uh, office operations? I think it's important that, first of all, that the companies understand the relevance and, 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 uh, and the, the need, right, of great workspace. Because your, your team is your most valuable asset and you need them to be able to operate effectively. So whenever I talk to a company, it's almost as simple as, you know, you can draw a line down the middle of the page, right-hand side is your core product, what you want to do. Everything on the left-hand side you need to ensure is, is great for your team, but you, you should work with expertise to deliver that. So there is no, it can be quite seducing when you actually look at the cost per square foot or cost per square meter of real estate in its raw sense, but you've got to go through an education curve to understand all the impacts that that, that, that's, that that space will have on your profit and loss or on your, your very valuable investment funds. So by working with a flexible provider, you are getting, you're getting so much more for your money. And so if you are anything under, if you, we, we, we categorize companies by numbers of people. And if you are sort of sub 10 people, which is a you know, critical mass of, of size for an early stage company, 10 to 15 people, um, we can flex you up and down, but a 10 to 15 man business will typically take, in their own mind, they probably say, think they need a thousand square feet of space, an office actually maybe five, 600 square feet of space. But if you consider if they take an office inside one of our spaces, which is 50,000 square feet, they're getting access to another 10,000 square feet of facilities. So they've now, for investment in a thousand, they've got 11,000. And that, that will drive productivity for your business and I think it's it's an it, it it's what we would call a you know a no-brainer decision um, so for instance what what does the future look for you um, as Kofisi um, from yeah. where you sit I think you and your management team what are you working on what are you thinking about apart from expansion apart from you know looking at the trends in business yeah I think uh, I think for us our pursuit of excellence is, is something that keeps us awake at night. You know, we want to ensure that our members are really getting a great day at work every day. Um, you know, we live by value of every day is day one. We want to make sure that everyone who comes in every day feels the same as they did the first time they came. Uh, hopefully the way you felt today when you, yes. when you, when so you visited us. <laughs> Thank you. First time uh, and enjoyed it as uh, well. Uh, you know, I, 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 and I, what we are doing more of this year is investing a lot more in our people as well in terms of training. It's a big area for us, uh, personal development and, and development of, of, of critical resource in, in, in your people um, is something that we're working very, very hard on. We have um, amazing event spaces um, our knowledge rooms, which are really driven to, to assist companies with to be able to do training for their teams, to be able to strategize, whether it be for a small uh, senior team to a, to a full divisional team, coming into those day spaces for the day and, and going on a journey together where, you, where there is a, there's, a, there's a commonality of theme across that, which is that they are trying to knowledge improve and to, and to share more or to get better. And I think that, 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 that area of development is a really important f feature of the way we think and will be a, a very important driver for us over the next 12 months. So what will be your parting shot and your management advice uh, from where you sit as uh, MD and co-founder of uh, Coffee From my personal point of view, I think personal development is a, is, 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 is a critical theme to your, to your uh, career journey. Uh, it's not something that necessarily always comes across on, on the page. It's not something they necessarily write on your CV, but I think the, 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 that comes through to me in interviews, right? When someone actually understands and has thought through. I mean, I often ask people questions like, you know, what brands do you, do, do you respect? Like, what, what kind of services have you experienced that you think are great? And I've, I'm asking them to, so that they can think outside 
of what is our, our, our little box, but also kind of bringing value add in, 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 in into the job, which is the jobs are often defined because they have to be. But at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're part of a team and you have to be able to work together to, to drive your vision through right and to, and to and to make it work so i think so i think that roundedness is a really important feature for for individuals yeah. um just stay current you know yeah. um there there are great mechanisms we find great talent through um through social media through linkedin and you know we have a we have a website page for our for our roles so as, as you say there are we're always looking for great people great what's that one critical aspect you look out for in your next hire to to, to me it's an it's it, it's an attention. It's an attention to what makes things not just good, but what makes things great. That's what I look for in a person. Great. Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you so Lovely much for the you. chance as well. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, good to be here and thanks thank for hosting you. us. Welcome. And for the partnership as well uh, with The Headhunter. Great. Well, that has been our episode with Michael Aldridge, our CEO and co-founder of uh, Coffee Africa. Uh, Honoured to have been here. My name is Laban Cliff. Uh, be sure, of course, to catch this on our social media platforms across the standard media group. My name is Laban Cliff. Have a good evening.